When you think of the butcher shop, you think pork chops and T-bones. Not at all a place for vegetarians. No. But that is about to change with a first-in-the-nation shop opening Saturday in Minneapolis. This morning to Russia Eats at the Herbivorous Butcher. Don't be deceived by the meat cleavers sticking out of this northeast Minneapolis storefront or those gleaming white butcher cases. We use um, tomato paste, tomato juice, pinto beans to get different textures. Aubrey Walsh and her brother Kale own the Herbivorous Butcher, a meat-free meat shop. No one believes that your name is really Kale. No, no one ever will. <laughs> no one ever will. I got my driver's license. But <laughs> you can prove it if need be. Oh, certainly, yeah. Their vegan butcher shop is the first in the nation, and the concept has gotten the media coverage around the world. I was like, let's open this vegan butcher shop together, huh? Yeah. And my mom called one day and said, your brother quit college. What do you know about this? And I was like, oh, gosh, nothing. <laughs> For the past several years, they've been perfecting their recipes. The kitchen is more like a bakery than a butcher shop. Each meat-free meat starts with a high-protein, high-vitamin wheat flour. And then natural seasonings and sauces and flavors are added. The porterhouse apple juice reacts with tomato juice in such a way that we kind of get that irony, steaky, bloody flavor. You know, when we cut into the steaks and it's... It's remarkable, really. Before they built the butcher shop, they sold at the Minneapolis Farmer's Market, sampling meat-free sausages like this sriracha brat. I had a lot of brats yeah. in my day. <laughs> like that tastes very much like a brat. Some people think it's stupid for vegans to recreate meat because you've chosen to stay away from meat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, for me personally, I didn't become vegan because I didn't like the taste of meat or like the texture of meat. Most of our customer base are actually omnivores. They're people who um, do Meatless Monday, who are trying to cut down on meat for health reasons. Ultimately, Aubrey and Kale hope to have herbivorous butcher shops on the east and west coast, selling things like their popular Korean ribs. The term butcher is a little controversial because you're not butchering anything. Sure. Well, you know, we butcher plants. The plant-based world is part of the future, and we're gonna take the word butcher with us. Aubrey has been vegetarian since she was a teenager. Kale became vegan just five years ago, and he said he missed burgers, he missed steaks, not just because of the flavor, but because of that communal experience. You sit down together, you have protein, you have carbs. And so we have the Korean rib right here. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I seared it a little bit this morning, and nice then we, we microwaved it, so uh, we don't Actually, have an oven. Mm -hmm. This is this is no more or less rib-like than the McRib. Exactly. It's, you know, there's mm -hmm. no bone in it. You're not exactly sure what is in it. It <laughs> tastes better than the McRib. Yeah, this tastes is like good. barbecue sauce. Good. And, and I'm a meat eater. I was very, I was very skeptical. I expected not yeah. to like that. Texture's fine. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. The yeah. idea is that it's meat eaters who will get this. Yeah. That you will, because if you're a true vegan and you've been eating vegetables all the time, do you you're want fine. this? You're not, who knows? But the rest of us looking to sub out one day, mm -hmm. maybe this is not. I could do this. I could it's do not this. bad. Yeah. We got a whole right. other one there. Thank today. you for asking all the tough questions like, is his name really Kale? Thank you. That's right. <laughs> I was curious about that one. Yeah. <laughs>